it seems it works. So good afternoon to everybody. Uh, first, I would like to say a big thanks to the organizers and especially to Julia. It's really a pleasure to be here. It's the first time for me in Israel and it seems it's a great time. So uh, let me introduce myself a little bit. I'm a clinician, a physician. I'm not working with mice, I'm working with patients. Uh, that's the difference. And so I'm doing that since more than 25 years when I started anti-aging um, in, in my lifetime, I would say is what I'm doing. It's, yeah, I started in the last century already. And um, I'm here as one of the representatives of the European Society of Preventive, Regenerative and Anti-Aging Medicine. On the other side, um, I'm here as the founder of the German Center for Personalized Prevention and Optimization, which is a small private center in Hanover where we are dealing with the issues of patients for preventive um, issues, but as well as for health concerns. So longevity, you cannot achieve with beauty. That is, let's say, a main thesis. And in the field of anti-aging, a lot of my colleagues are focusing more and more on aesthetics. And for me, that is not the real approach if we are looking for longevity. Maybe you can think if you are stay young, be healthy and look sexy, that gives you more attractivity and for reproductivity, maybe that may be, um, well, um, some helpful idea, but really uh, the talk today is about not to die from the big, well, the top killers. And we are talking to, or I would like to talk today about the cancer issue. So if we are looking to the European Union in 2018, you see 26% of all the deaths uh, are related to cancer. So cancer is the second killer in the European Union. Um, and there are only two, these two big killers, it's cancer and let's say the cardiovascular problems. So cancer can strike anyone. Statistically, every second person well, gets a cancer. So you can have a look to your neighbor. Maybe you or your neighbor will be one of them. Um, the early detection maybe is actually still the key to improve the survival rate. And as you can see here, you see different types of cancers and probably if you can choose one, you can take the bowel cancer because then the survival rate is more optimistic than, for example, in uh, lung cancer or in ovarian cancer. So finally, the cancer survival rate is better in stage one than in stage three. About the status quo in Germany, you see there are early detections for breast cancer existing, prostate cancer, colon cancer, skin cancer, and about half a million new cancer cases are detected every year in Germany. But 55% of all cancer types there is no yet existing any kind of early detection mechanism. So that means, well, we are missing a lot of cancers and we are missing more than 100 different types of cancer. So what is necessary, uh, necessary is to uh, close this gap uh, and to get more information about all these other types of cancers, about these, well, in Germany, more than 250,000 uh, people who are not yet having the option to get an early detection for their cancer. So we can probably say any cancer screening is highly recommended yet, but ex there is not this one typical cancer test existing. So we can go for imaging technology like X-ray, CT, MRI, and others. We can go for mammography for breast cancer. We have several tumor markers and what we see it's sometimes very expensive. It's, it's, it's limited for only few tumor entities uh, or they are very specific and not effective in this cancer screening or they are risky or harmful uh, by the procedure itself. So theoretically, actually you can go for very sophisticated techniques like MRI or PET-CT, maybe with the highest uh, quote of uh, remarkable uh, insight. But you know, the examination is very expensive. You have a radiation burden, for example, and as a nationwide program, this wouldn't be um, makeable because, well, it's too costly and not everybody would have be the access to do this. So the idea was 
it's necessary to have a filter test which provides sufficient evidence for a potential malignant or pre-malignant lesion and a follow-up examinations with targeted use of imaging technology. So what kind of requirements this test should fulfill? Well, its first line should be like a universal cancer test, the detection of maximal possible cancer entities. It should have a high sensitivity. It should detect malignant tumors as well as pre-malignant lesions. It should be very specific and it should be affordable. As we have seen, cancer is a thing which develops. It's an issue which starts and then it needs several years regularly to um, become a cancer itself. And so we have specific moments, so I would say critical detection points which are available to find the moment when, a, let's say, a small lesion, a cellular change becomes, well, a local tumor, a carcinoma in situ, or it becomes, a, it goes through a matrix degeneration. So I will take you now to some um, blood tests in a combination with an imaging, imaging technology, which will enable us to fulfill these requirements. So it's the so-called Pantum Detect test. It's an available test on the market, actual. It's a blood test. And we have uh, some, um, we have made it in a context of combination. So how does this Pantum Detect work? Well, Pantum is a blood test which looks for two enzymes. It's APU10, DNA is X, and TKTL1. And those enzymes occur in all kinds of cancer types. And the technology behind is epitope diagnostic in macrophages. So these DNA X or APO10 enzymes show the disruption of programmed cell death, apoptosis, and it can be found in all kinds of tumor cells. So this disruptive cell apoptosis is the origin of malignant um, degeneration. And this, well, test could be confirmed by more than 110,000 blood samples in Germany. The second one is an enzyme, it's called TKTL1. And TKTL1 is a marker for a specific metabolic, metabolism in cancer cells. You see on the left side, there is a, well, a benign tumor cell and there is no TKTL1 uh, found. On the right side, there is a malignant cancer cell which is an expression of TKTL1. So cell proliferation means elevated cell division and an increase of glucose uptake. So the TKTL1 protein regulates the aerobic glycolysis, the fermentation of glucose in the presence of oxygen. So that is a cellular metabolic shift in cancer cells. And as well, this uh, enzyme and as a tumor marker was confirmed in different blood uh, samples in Germany, which were done in the last years. So this epitope diagnostic in macrophages detects these enzyme in immune cells and the immune system itself doesn't el eliminate regularly healthy cells. So how is it, how you can imagine how it's working? These macrophages, they migrate from blood into the tissue and the macrophages is like the, they are eating all these kind of tumor cells. So they are not digesting it. So can look like in a gastroscopy or in a macrophage inside their, I would call it stomach. And with a specific analytic tool with a sonde, you can detect uh, these kind of enzymes. And if you then put these findings in a computer algorithm, you get this so-called quantum detect score, which is mentioned here in the center of, of the poll. So, and Looking for this and combining these both enzymes as markers for some kind of cellular changes, metabolic problems on a cellular level, you see the sensitivity of this test is around 97% and the specificity is around 99%. That is a great value. So we could say, okay, we could detect universally. We have a good sensitivity good specificity on all the other findings that matches quite well. So how do we combine this with imaging? You know, there's a problem with this test. The problem is 
that it cannot prove where is the local lesion. It's a universal cancer test. That means it can be everywhere in the body. So it doesn't provide any information about a tumor localization. So what is necessary? We, a second technology. And okay, here MRI or PET-CT comes on, into the game because the health burden, which normally uh, would well, mean we wouldn't go for this because of radiation or some other problems, it doesn't matter because we have now cleared the target group a little bit closer. So we have identified the risk group and that means we can justify the health burden. What is necessary if you have, you remember again the timeline, what needs from the first changes on cellular level to becoming a cancer, we have time. And it means if you are undergoing every year this kind of diagnostic, you have a chance to find this point of, well, shift to the cellular, on the cellular level to a cancer. So this test is recommended actual any year. And if there is an outcome, a positive Pantum score, well, then the people have to undergo an, a PET CT or an MRI, whatever. So the screening problems you see here, and um, about two up to three percent of the people are de detected positive, and that matches with the average of the cancers in the population. And so they are undergoing then PET, M uh, PET CT or MRI, and maybe then they receive a treatment. And the other ninety-seven percent, well, they have to undergo the test next year again. There was a study done at the uni, uh, university in Hamburg, in the UK, and with about five, more than 5,000 participants. And you see around 96% were detected negative. So there was nothing to do. But the other 3.6% uh, has to undergo different diagnostic tools. And I conclude with the remark below results indicate that the pantom detect blood test could be used as a screening tool and in combination with PET-CT and MI enables the detection of malignant tumors and pre-malignant lesions at a stage where in many cases there is a good chance for a cure. So, okay, the test maybe is good, the combination as well, but how to bring it in the market, how to bring it on the track? Um, when the producers of this test were discussing with an insurance company, the insurance com company understood very well, man, that is a clever solution because even if nobody would pay for the test, but they could prove in their, um, in their group of, of um, customers and they find, let's say, the customers who will not receive a cancer, that will mean they will save money. And so this study with the uh, University of Hamburg was co-financed by the insurance companies. And that is a completely new approach in the German market because an insurance companies together with a producer, well, are enabling a new technology to enter the market. And what you can see here is, let's say the, cost, the, the customer journey as, as it's called behind. No, no, you see on the first level, it's a, well, as it's a sales concept, a screening program as a part of the insurance company. Um, you see then on the second stage, it's, um, well, it's a customer portal. So the people can enter the customer portal, can book appointments, can book the tests and so on. Then blood sampling centers are involved all over Germany. And the goal is to have a dense network of more than 200 centers in Germany. Then the, uh, the evolution of the results and the findings are done in partner laboratories. And then there is a telehealth um, center behind so that the customer is always well accompanied all the time. He is not alone with his findings. And then medical centers for follow-up examinations, MRI and PET CTs are involved. So this is um, the pilot soft launch, which will, has started on September uh, last year. And at the end of December, you see uh, there have been involved 33 blood drawing centers, 17 image centers, uh, some agent of the insurance company and the first booked appointments um, with this, let's say, market, market, marketing tool. And um, to show you that really this has an impact on the daily life, I give you only some 
let's say, pictures. This is a woman who was completely healthy because this test is only offered for healthy people with no symptoms, having no cancer in the last five years, yeah? and several other restrictions. And this healthy uh, woman has uh, undergone this blood withdrawal and a lung cancer was detected. And remember, there is no um, preventive nor an early detection tool on the market for lung cancer. So finding that there is a cellular change made her uh, undergo um, PET CD, and finally it led to uh, a surgery uh, treatment and that saves um, her life in this case. There are a lot of studies done. I give you a short um, overview about this and you see I'm speeding up with my speech because I know we are late on this afternoon. Um, but uh, there are a lot of studies done about this and um, um, you see there are a lot of cancer types already detected with desmetology. Um, this is again a study done in uh, Hamburg. There are studies done with the um, Hamburg Eppendorf. There are studies done in uh, Tübingen, a lot of other studies. So there's a lot of papers existing already. And these transcatalase like one TKTL1 enzyme is one of the most interesting markers for metabolic changes or the cellular level in cancer cells. And um, so if prevention is one step on the way to longevity, we are not talking here about prevention really, it's early detection, but it means early detection is a way to survive. And then we have a chance to go for longevity. So a combination of that uh, immunological biopsy and imaging that can save lives and life quality. And so, for me, interesting as a physician who is, has never been involved in, let's say, this business field, it's interesting that new partnerships between insurance companies, producers, and physicians who are involved in this, well, they can change a little bit this paradigm from illness to healthness. So thank you for your attention. And um, if there's any question, I will be happy to answer it or try to answer this. And you can get me also per email if you want. So thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's reimbursed by one insurance company, private insurance companies. The goal probably um, on long term will be that other insurance companies will also provide it. But actually it's a USP for one insurance companies. They have Took, taking it for their as, as first um, approach. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. Okay.